Let us start with module 1 of our subject new and renewable energy system. So what do you mean by renewable energy? So renewable energy is nothing but the energy obtainable from a source which does not get depleted due to continuous use. So now before going into the topics let me explain what the outcome expected by studying this particular module. So after completing this module, you should be able to understand the various energy sources, the importance of renewable energy sources as well as various energy storage schemes. So these are the contents of this particular module. So you have to study the classification of various energy sources, their comparison, advantages and disadvantages. Then various energy storage systems, different types of energy storage systems and then the world and Indian energy scenario. So now let me introduce. All of us know what energy is. So we usually define energy as the capacity to do work. So energy is the capacity to do work. But more specifically energy can be defined as the primary and universal measure of work done by human beings and the nature. That is, energy is a universally accepted measure of work done. How much work is done? So energy is a measure of that. And everything that happens in the nature, every processes, every activities, etc. involves the flow of energy in any one of its forms. So now if we consider a particular country energy is required in all sectors of its economy. So for every processes to occur, energy is an important input for communication systems, for transportation facilities, for research and development activities to take place, for industries to run, for every activities requires energy as an input. And the per capita energy consumption of a country is a measure of that country's per capita income. Now what is per capita energy consumption? That is energy consumption per person. Energy consumed by a single person. So that is a measure of the income of that particular country. So how is that? So we know if a country is consuming more energy means more and more processes are taking place in that country. More and more development activities are there. So more industries may be running more research and development activities are taking place. So consequently, that country will have a huge amount of income. So that is why it has been said that the per capita energy consumption of a country is directly related to its per capita income. So let us check this fact by considering India and USA as example. So if you consider USA, their population is only about 7% of the total world population. But their energy consumption is 32% of the total world energy consumption. So they are having a such they are having such a high percentage of energy consumption. So whereas India, which is having 20% of world's population, consumes only 1% of the total world energy consumption. So our energy consumption is very low. So this means America is consuming more energy. That means there are more industries. They are, they are carrying out more research and development activities, etc. So their income is also very high. The per capita income of USA is 50 times more than that in India. So now we also have to look into the importance of renewable energy resources. Why do we have to depend more on the renewable energy resources? So actually we have a number of non-renewable resources like fossil fuel, nuclear energy, etc. So as of now there is, these resources are abundant. There are enough amount of resources for, for our use. But as the population increases and more and more developments are taking place, the demand for energy is increasing day by day. And if we are depending only on this non-renewable energy resources like fossil fuels, for all our requirements, what will happen? 
ദീസ് റിസോഴ്സസ് വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ഡിപ്ലീറ്റ് അത് തീർന്നു പോകും നമ്മളെ എല്ലാ ആവശ്യത്തിനും ഇപ്പോൾ കറൻ്റ്ലി നമ്മൾ പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ എല്ലാ ആവശ്യ ആവശ്യങ്ങളും സാറ്റിസ്ഫൈ ചെയ്യാനുള്ള നോൺ റിന്യൂവബിൾ റിസോഴ്സസ് അവൈലബിൾ ആണ് ബട്ട് ഇഫ് വി ആർ കണ്ടിന്യൂസ്ലി ഡിപ്പെൻഡിങ് ഓൺ ദീസ് റിസോഴ്സസ് വാട്ട് വിൽ ഹാപ്പൻ ദേ വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ഡിപ്ലീറ്റഡ് അത് തീർന്നു പോകും So, in order to reduce the load on this fossil fuels, we have to go for some alternate energy resources. And the scientists have found a new category of resources known as renewable resources, which does not get depleted even if we are continuously using it. So, examples are solar energy, wind energy, etc. We know that these resources are abundantly available. and they will get filled up after each use and also they are non polluting they will not cause any harm to the atmosphere so and there is another factor known as energy security that means uh, we have abundant of fossil fuels now but we have to store some of these fossil fuel for our future use we have to secure some of the energy for the future use സോ അങ്ങനെ എനർജി സെക്യൂരിറ്റി ഉണ്ടാവണമെങ്കിലും കുറച്ച് ഫോസിൽ ഫ്യൂൽ ഫ്യൂച്ചറിലേക്ക് യൂസ് ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിലും നമുക്ക് എന്ത് വേണം ഇപ്പോഴുള്ളതിനെ കൂടുതലായിട്ട് ഡിപ്പെൻഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ പാടില്ല അതിന് പകരം ഓൾട്ടർനേറ്റ് ആയിട്ട് റിന്യൂവബിൾ റിസോഴ്സസ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യണം സോ ദീസ് ആർ ദ റീസൺസ് വിച്ച് ലെഡ് ടു ദ ഡെവലപ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ റിന്യൂവബിൾ റിസോഴ്സസ് സോ നൗ വി ഹാവ് ടു സ്റ്റഡി ദ ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് എനർജി റിസോഴ്സസ് ദ എനർജി സോഴ്സസ് ക്യാൻ ബി ക്ലാസിഫൈഡ് ഇൻ മെനി വേസ് So, first classification is based on the usability, that is, whether these resources can be used as such or how much of processing these resources requires before they can be converted to a usable form. So, based on that, resources are classified into three types, primary sources, secondary sources and supplementary sources. And second classification is based on traditional use. whether they are traditionally used or they are introduced recently pandu totte paramparagathamayi use cheyyunnadaano adho pudiyadayittu introduce cheyyunnadaano so based on that conventional and non conventional and third classification is based on the long term availability whether that resources resource is available for a long period of time or will they get depleted അതായത് എത്ര നാൾ വേണേലും ഉപയോഗിക്കാൻ അത് അവൈലബിൾ ആയിരിക്കുമോ അതോ പെട്ടെന്ന് തീർന്നു പോകുമോ സോ ഡിപ്പെൻഡിങ് ഓൺ ദാറ്റ് ദേ ആർ ക്ലാസിഫൈഡ് ആസ് റിന്യൂവബിൾ ആൻഡ് നോൺ റിന്യൂവബിൾ എനർജി സോഴ്സസ് സോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഇസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ കൊമേഴ്ഷ്യൽ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വെദർ ദേ ആർ യൂസ്ഡ് ഫോർ എനി കൊമേഴ്ഷ്യൽ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ഓർ നോട്ട് കൊമേഴ്ഷ്യൽ ആൻഡ് നോൺ കൊമേഴ്ഷ്യൽ എനർജി സോഴ്സസ് സോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഇസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ ഒറിജിൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ഹൗ ദേ ആർ ജനറേറ്റഡ് so based on that the classifications are hydro energy steam energy nuclear energy fossil fuel solar energy wind tidal geothermal and biomass energy so these are the main classifications so now let us see each of these classification in detail so first classification is based on usability of energy that is based on how much of processing they requires for converting it into a form to which it can be supplied to the uh, in which it can be supplied to the consumers that is direct consumers in supply cheyanulla form like kondu varanamengil ee particular energy source endu maatram processing cheyanam adinte basis lana nammal ee classification primary secondary and supplementary resources so first one is the primary resources so these are the resources which are available in the raw form so they are also known as raw energy resources they cannot be used as such adu namukku enganaano kittunathu bhoomi n enganaano kittunathu angane thanne use cheyan pattathilla they have to be first located then examined extracted from there and have to be processed before they can be supplied to the consumers and one of the advantage of these primary resources is that they are having a very high energy yield ratio so what is energy yield ratio it is the ratio of the energy obtained from the raw energy source to the energy spent to obtain that particular energy source aa energy source endu maatram energy namukku tharunu adhaayidhu example nokkiye fossil fuels coal oil and natural gas 
So we are liberating energy from these resources by burning it. Alright. But the burn chamber in the matter of energy kitty. Are they divided by our particular energy source kandatan? And the kitan made the mal in the matter of energy spend it. So that ratio should be high. That means energy output obtainable from that resource should be very high compared to the energy spent for obtaining it. So these fuels, fossil fuels, coal, oil and natural gas which are primary resources are having a very high energy yield ratio. So now the second one is the secondary resources. Secondary resources are obtained from primary resources by some transformations. So these are the form which can be finally supplied to the consumers. Example are petrol, electrical energy, etc. Now the last one is supplementary resources. Supplementary resources are also derived from the primary resources but by a number of stages of continuous transformation. So example is biogas. We know biogas is a form of primary resources seen on means the column oil is a form of earth in the soil and under the buried eye. Plant in the air remains seen on the biomass material seen on the other. So, this is organic materials in an airtight container degradation subject to biogas on the other side of biogas formation. So, biogas is a supplementary resource which is obtained from the primary resources by a number of stages of transformation. So, it is a supplementary resource. So, now the next classification is based on traditional use whether these resources are conventionally being used or they, are they introduced recently? Okay. That is the Pandamudale, Parambaragadamai, you see the only Rikina resources are now, although Pudia died to introduce the Jayda resources are now. So, based on that, there are two classifications conventional energy sources and non conventional energy sources. So, conventional is the end there, Parambaragadam. So, conventional energy resources are those sources that have been traditionally used. Traditionally used that are known as conventional energy resources. Example are fossil fuels, hydro energy, nuclear energy, etc. So, second one is non conventional energy resources. So, these are the resources which are introduced recently. They came into use recently. Example are solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, geothermal energy, etc. So next classification is based on the long term availability. That is the Ethranal Ubevikan Vendi Oladum available on the Ubevich Gainal Tirna Bona Dana. That is long term availability. Whether they can be used for a long period of time or will they get depleted if we continuously use it. So based on that, non renewable resources and renewable resources. So what are non renewable resources? They cannot be renewed. They will get depleted if we continuously use it and they will not get replenished. Replenishing means filling up. So these type of resources non renewable does not get filled up. They will get depleted. So example are fossil fuels, nuclear energy etc. So second is renewable resources. So these are the resources which gets renewed. They will get they will not get depleted even if we continuously use it. They will get replenished. Replenished means fill up here. They will get replenished after each use. So example are hydro energy. Hydro energy is a renewable form of energy. It is conventional but renewable. So hydro energy, solar, wind, tidal, geothermal etc. are examples of renewable resources. So now fourth classification is based on commercial application whether the resources are used for some commercial applications or are they used for domestic applications only, domestic uses only. So commercial resources. So as the name indicates, these are the resources which are used for some commercial activities. So for example, electricity, petrol, diesel, kerosene, etc. These resources are used for commercial purposes. And these commercial resources are derived from our primary resources such as uh, coal, etc., coal, fossil fuels, etc. 
So a country's economy depends on its ability to convert the primary resources into commercial resources. So various commercial resources are electricity, petrol, diesel, gas, kerosene, etc. So now non-commercial resources. So this non-commercial resources are the resources that are used directly without passing through any commercial outlet. They are not used for any commercial applications, usually used for domestic applications only. So examples are wood, animal dung cake, crop residues, etc. So the last classification is based on origin and we will discuss it in the next lecture.